That was definitely the worst moment of my life. I, I seriously thought I was dying. I'm gonna explain more and tell you more later because I need to rest. This is the book I published in October. It is called Gdiv Shade Som Nezomrel, which sounds like an extraterrestrial language. That is because it's not written in English, but in my native language. It became a bestseller in my country, which is absolutely meaningless in this story, but I like to plug it everywhere. I have very low self-esteem. There are 18 stories in the book, every single one pretty dramatic, but one of them is more dramatic than the others. It's the story everyone's been the most interested in when they were asking about my book. By the way, the book is a bestseller. Ten najsilnejší zážitok bola určite malária. Ja som totiž to niekoľkokrát sa seriózne lúčil so životom, napríklad keď som mal maláriu. This is how I got malaria. The story begins in southwest Togo near the small town of Kpalime. We attempted to reach the highest point of this West African country. Another beautiful day here in Togo. I was craving this moment. We are finally on a trek. We are going to the highest mountain of Togo. The altitude is incredible, 6,005. Just kidding, it's just 986 meters. But still, it's the highest mountain here and it's right there. The name of the mountain is Mount Agu. The hike should take around three hours. We should be crossing two villages. We are extremely excited. Oh, I was craving this. Look at the nature. Let's go. minutes into the hike I'm amazed by this beautiful nature everything is so green so dense I love this jungle but it's very very humid we're gonna have a snack break we have no idea what this is we bought it at the local market it's kind of sweet nutty if you know what this is please leave a comment below and I will like the comment. C'est un corps loin. This guy just said that we're still 12 kilometers away from the peak, which is very unexpected because we were thinking we're like halfway there and it should be a three hour hike, but it looks like it's gonna be a six hour hike. The hell? It's gonna be dark in like two and a half hours and we have no idea how to get down. Well, this is gonna be pretty interesting. Bonjour. The peak is five kilometers away from us. I think we just arrived at the second village. Bonjour. And this village is covered in mist that makes it so, so insanely beautiful. snack break which is more of a regaining energy break we do need energy right now we're 500 meters away from the top Easily imagine a horror movie shot here. Look at that. Bon 
Bonjour, merci. We are here, the 12th kilometer of the hike. We're at the highest point of Togo right now. Yes. There is no sign though, they told us there is no sign. So there is no proof that we're at the highest peak of this country. Anyway, you have to believe me. <laughs> I expected some kind of mountain with a spectacular view, but it's just few houses and a lot of mist and a little forest. That's it. Come on. Can you see? Yes, you can see. Right here. It's a video. You can have it. You can say, Bonjour, ami fans de République Tchèque, de France. Don't speak English. Tu peux parler français? <laughs> this is the television station of Togo and I have one crazy idea. I'm the tallest standing person in Togo right now, so I guess that's pretty cool. Although it's just 986 meters, I will not go higher because it's too slippery. Uh, let's go to Kpalime and have a dinner. I'm starving. It will be well deserved. See you there. Plot twist. There is no motorbike driver. The descent starts right now. One of the guys is coming with us. I have no idea why, but look what's in front of us. So initially we thought that this guy was going to help us find a motorcycle, but turns out that he's going to the nearest village to visit some girl, so he's not gonna help us. He's going to f We're losing our battle with time. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. A van. Yes, yes. We are going down. Yes. We're not gonna die today. Let's see. Oh my god, this is the best thing that could have happened to us. We're sitting in a van. It's very comfortable. Look how dark it is. It would be totally dark in like 30 minutes. I'm so thankful for this. See you in Kpalime. It was just a matter of time. We got flat tire. We're in total darkness in the middle of a jungle with a flat tire. How was your day? The new tire is also flat. I have no idea what we're gonna do right now. They're arguing in their native language. No idea what's gonna happen. I can't believe we're going with that tire. So the driver took us to the bottom of the mountain, now we just need to take a motorbike to Kpalime. Wow, what a day. See you at Kpalime. This dinner, this fufu, this is called fufu, is well deserved. I know it doesn't look very fancy, but trust me, it's delicious, especially after that tough hike. What a day. See you at our hotel room. Tough day. Very tough day. The only thing I need right now is 10 hours of sleep. Good night. Good morning. I've been feeling like shit for the last 8 hours. Having incredible fever. I just took a cold shower because it's just unbearable. <sighs> I feel extremely nauseous, like like a flu, but 10 times worse. I'm very scared that it may be malaria, so I'm going to a hospital. Filming this is a bad idea, I'm leaving the camera here. Shit, I'm so weak.
so I have malaria. I was hospitalized because the malaria that I have is a serious one. I had a malaria shock in a waiting room and you just cannot imagine, you cannot imagine. That was definitely the worst moment of my life. I, I seriously thought I was dying. I'm gonna explain more and tell you more later because I need to rest. Hey, what's up? This poor guy's got malaria today. It was severe malaria. I think he, he got through hell today. Well, let me see what he's got to say. Uh, about an hour ago, I shed myself. So uh, my pants are completely covered in shit and I'm naked underneath this cloth. I, I really went through hell today. I, I feel a little bit better right now because they gave me, gave me a lot of medication about a half an hour ago. But this, this was just crazy. Here it works like this. The doctor prescribes you medication and you gotta go get it yourself. When they found out that Peter had almost 40 degrees fever, he prescribed the medication and he told me that I, I have to go get it. But he told me that they didn't have it in the pharmacy here in the hospital, that I gotta go to the city. So I took the motorbike, we went to the first pharmacy and they didn't have it. So we went to another one and they didn't have it. So we went to a third one and then the fourth one and then the tenth one. I, I went to all the pharmacies in this fucking city. It's the rainy season so it was raining. If there was only a dirt road full of potholes, which is not so great on a motorbike and after like one hour of driving around we still didn't have the medication because it was just nowhere to be found. So I, I went back here and the doctor was like, okay, so I'm gonna change it. They should have this one. Try again. So I went to do another round. But no, they, they had it in the in the first pharmacy, fortunately. But yeah, I was I was just exhausted. That was the first time I was like, oh my god, I got enough. I wanna go home. But Peter is better, so we stay positive. It's gonna be all right. So before I get to a more detailed and tragic version of what exactly happened, there's one thing I need to stress out. I wasn't taking anti-malarials. It is not advised to take this pretty strong medication for more than 50 days because it may have some serious side effects. And since our African trip was about to take 3 months, we decided not to take anti-malarials. And now enjoy the speech of a man who literally thought he was dying several hours ago. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my third day in the hospital. The blood test results just came in and I don't have malaria anymore, which is great. I'm so thankful. So three days ago at midnight before sleep, I, I kind of touched my forehead and it felt warm. I just ignored it. It was hard to fall asleep. I fell asleep at 4 a.m. and I felt kind of nauseous and dizzy. And I woke up at 5, 5 a.m. and I thought I was having flu, but I still ignored it as it was too early to go to the hospital for me, it was still dark. Two hours later I was just burning, I was burning, my whole body was in extreme pain. I didn't check my temperature because I knew that I would panic immediately. So we ran to the hospital with my girlfriend. The scary part begins now. Malaric shock is a state when red blood cells explode and release the malaria parasite into your blood. This causes extreme cramps, extremely high fever, chills and so on. I experienced this as I was waiting in a waiting room of the hospital. So I felt like I was about to throw up, then I felt chills in my legs and arms that resulted in extreme cramps, but not cramps that you know from like football or, or some physical activity but this was way too extreme. I was completely paralyzed, I couldn't move my arms, my legs and the worst thing was that I felt cramps even in my throat because I obviously have muscles in my throat 
and I could hardly breathe. My girlfriend is usually not very serious about some medical conditions, but she started to panic and she really thought that I was about to die at that time because I wasn't able to breathe and I was completely paralyzed. So she started panicking a little bit, trying to call a nurse or some help, but nobody was coming. Uh, and I was like half fainted and half alive. I wasn't realizing what was happening, I was just blathering stuff. And another thing, I was sweating so much and it wasn't the regular sweat, it was a yellow sweat and it was dropping out of my face. After like three minutes a nurse came and they put me on a wheelchair. They brought me into a special room with, with these severe cases. Now, I know that a lot of people in the Western world are very scared of malaria, but it isn't that bad. Most of the cases are not that bad. They usually give you pills and you're good in like three days. But that's like the normal malaria, not the severe malaria. What I had is severe malaria. That can cause brain damage, uh, has more severe symptoms. They gave me some medication. As you can see, I'm still getting some medication. It turned out I was more unfortunate. Not only I had malaria, but I also had some infection in my intestines. It's delicious. So they also gave me antibiotics and stuff against diarrhea. And I was just suffering the first day. It was, it was just horrible, horrible, horrible. I left the hospital the next day and it took me about a week to regain my life force. Even walking was extremely exhausting, but I survived. And if there's one thing, one piece of advice I should give to anyone going to a place where malaria is present, buy my book. It's the best. Sorry, I know it's not funny anymore comedy failure. No, really, take anti-malarials. And if you decide not to take them like me, buy medication that cures malaria immediately after you get to your destination, take it right after you spot first subtle symptoms of malaria and go to a hospital. I didn't know something like this existed and it could have saved me a lot of trouble. Thank you for watching. I personally don't like this type of talking videos, but I hope the story was worth the talking. A more detailed version of this malaria story is available in my book, which uh, is the best.